Wow, it's really snowing out. You know what that means? It means I'm going to have to heat up the garage before I work on the car. <laughs> So you probably can hear the pilot light for the heater in the background, but hopefully you can hear the uh, wheel bearings as I check the wheel because I am. Uh, I have been checking the ball joints out left, right, up and down, and I really have determined that it is not the ball joints but something is going on here so today we are going to inspect the wheel bearings because uh, something is definitely going on there so I'll take my little impact wrench here which I absolutely love and we'll take off the wheel These electric impact wrenches are extremely nice. I highly recommend them. I went with the Milwaukee, talked to some people at work, and they said spend the extra money. This is the model 2662, and the difference between the two when you see half inch drive, 18 volts, is the way they hold on the socket, the impact socket. This one has a uh, a button the other one has an o-ring uh, I prefer the button my sockets have holes in them for the indent to go in there however you can't take them off <laughs> you actually have to depress the indent in order to get them off which is good uh, but I highly recommend an electric impact wrench so even with the wheel off I'm hearing something Checking the ball joints, make sure they're okay. And I might change the brakes while I have them off, change them from the Mercedes factory to some pads that don't dust as much, but uh, we'll see. All right, I removed the two mounting bolts, which required a 18 millimeter socket. And now it's free. I can take it off here and I will hang it up um, even though it's aluminum well, maybe it's cast too looks like the caps are aluminum and the main body that holds the that holds the uh, pads are cast so anyway that's out of the way uh, so now I'll take the uh, rotor off. So I'll pop this Torx screw here, which I probably should have done with the ro with the pads on, but uh, I got it. wasn't stuck. Yep, that's what I thought. So I'll have to take the uh, cap. So I'm just taking the screwdriver and. Twisting it. I think it's coming out a little bit at a time. Of course, I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to take all this stuff off first. <laughs> Alright, it's time to clean everything back up. Put it back together. Um, I'm satisfied that it's not the... Uh, wheel bearings so I don't get to show you how to replace some wheel bearings sorry about that but I'll turn this into a brake job video because I will replace the pads alright we'll remove the pins that hold the pads that'll free the anti-rattle clip then we'll remove the pads we'll compress the pistons there's uh, two on each side then we'll install the new pads anti-rattle clip and we'll use the pins to capture everything back and hold it in place. So we'll drive the pins out. Just depress the anti-rattle clip, pull the pin out, 
kind of frees up the other one. Just pull that pin out too. So I bought this tool. It's a dual uh, piston spreader. So it kind of works like a caulk gun almost. And so, but anyway, um, so I, I really never used one of these before. It really didn't come with instructions. And so the first thing I had to do is flip it around. This was facing the other way. And I didn't understand how it worked. And then also I ground off the ends so it would fit into the caliper because it was too long. This, uh, this distance right in here was shorter than this piece right here. So I ground down the end so it would fit in there. And now I'm just going to kind of push on the pads here and compress it that way. And again, I don't even know if that's correct, but you know, it's, it's working. So that's how I'm going to spread them. All right, once I got them spread, I'll just remove the old pads here. So now I'll just install the new pads. When I was editing this video, I realized that I didn't show the assembly of the brake pads uh, in that uh, I didn't show the installation of the anti-rattle clip and the pins, but uh, just went back together real easily. And when I did the passenger side, that was even easier. <laughs> I didn't film that at all, so I apologize about not showing the reassembly. But let me show you one of my pet peeves, or I want to talk about one of my pet peeves, in that, um, let's see, I hope you can see that hole right here. I should get a flashlight, sorry. But they're visible here on the passenger side pads and that's where the wear indicator goes so my passenger side pads <clears throat> which are the thickest of the two sides uh, it didn't come near the indicator pad so it, it the pads wouldn't have alarmed that they're worn for a, a while longer yet on the driver's side where there's no indicator you can see this slot right here that's where it would go if there was one on the driver's side. You can see it would have worn down and activated the lining warning. And pretty much all the cars I own, it seems that the designers put the indicator on the side that, that doesn't wear as much. That is just so weird. And I'm even talking about <clears throat> non-electrical indicators, like some of them you'll see like a a piece of metal over here that's supposed to touch the rotor and make a squealing sound uh, when it starts to wear. You'll even see those uh, <laughs> seem to be on the pad that wears the least. Um, you always want to try and have even wear on your pads, but that isn't always the case. I've cleaned rotors and calipers I mean I've cleaned them all up and lubricated them and tried very hard to make sure that it was all lubed up so that it would slide evenly or in this case compress evenly but that's, that's fairly difficult to do uh, beyond what it was designed for but anyway my my whole point of this conversation is to show you that uh, if your pads have an electronic device that indicates that they're worn, if it alarms, believe you me, you are very near the metal. And if you don't want to buy a pair of rotors and just replace the pads, you better do it as soon as you get an indication. So anyway, that's my tip. I know this was kind of a very weird video in that I didn't stay on task. But the uh, wheel bearings were okay, and then I replaced the pads, and then I was surprised how worn they were. 
So I just decided to talk about that. Thank you for watching.